excited about that game, but I think most of the country, Dalton, is excited about this game. Number 19, Colorado, going against at number 10, Oregon, in this game. 3.30 p.m. on ABC. Dalton, is the hype too much for the Buffaloes right now? No. Uh, no, it isn't. Uh, you, you've got a team. One, they're, one, they're exciting. They're fun to watch, mm -hmm. right? So that's... They're the most. They're probably the most entertaining team in college football right now. So I can't say that's unwarranted. But no, I think number nineteen for them sounds about right. If yeah. you tell me Colorado's the nineteenth best team in the country, I don't have any issue with that. And mm -hmm. and I think the part you're, the part that carries that is is Shador Sanders. We talked about it Monday. He is you you could argue he's a top five. He's one of the top five quarterbacks in college football right now. Yeah. Um, he's he makes every throw against every coverage clean pressure blitz not man zone everything he he just has all the tools and i you know i've said this before i i think i think he has the highest football iq of any quarterback in the country i think i think mentally his composure his ability to read defenses um and, and just just the cool under pressure uh, is unbelievable and it's what's you know now all of a sudden with travis hunter hurt this game's a 21 point spread for oregon mm -hmm. um I, I I just have a hard time thinking a team with Shadour Sanders the way he's playing right now can lose by 21 to anybody. I, I I just you have a quarterback that good and you're never out of games like that. Yeah, I completely agree. And yeah, I mentioned before Colorado now three and zero to start the season. That is two more wins than they had all of last season already. So an incredible job by Deion Sanders. I mean, they had that game, they had college game day in their game against Colorado State when last year that game would have been between two of the worst teams in college football. And you had the Rock there, you got Lil Wayne there, you got Rob Gronkowski on the sideline. A lot of other celebrities were there as well. And Colorado State is still the ninth worst FBS team. It's just that Colorado is that electric. Um, but again, they needed two overtimes to take down Colorado State, uh, even though they were 23 point favorites. This week will prove how legit Colorado is and how legit that Heisman conversation is for Shador Sanders, which you and I both agree is pretty legit right now. Um, yeah, man, Oregon's defense right now, 14th in the Power Five in terms of EPA allowed per passing play. So Oregon's got a pretty good uh, pass defense, so Shador Sanders has his hands full for sure in this game. But what is the matchup, Dalton, that you're looking forward to the most in this game? It has to be Oregon up front in their running game against yeah. Colorado's run defense. Colorado's run defense is the 10th worst graded in the country right now. Oregon's rushing grade is fourth, and they're second in the country in yards per carry. I believe it's 7.2 yards per carry right now they're they're putting up up front. So it, it's that. It's, it's yeah. Oregon being the bigger, more physical team and running directly at them. Um, when, you know, Nebraska, I think, actually, of all teams, put up the best formula against Colorado. You... You line up. You don't. You don't pull guys and get lateral. You don't try to stretch them east and west. Colorado's athletic. What they don't like is when teams just line up and run right downhill at them. You talk about man and duo concepts, double teams up front, mashing people down against man concepts. Colorado's run defense is the worst in the country with a run defense grade of thirty-seven point five. Oregon has that. They don't use it a ton. They use it some. You know, they're usually thought of as a zone team, but they do use some man concepts like that some. I think they'd be smart to lean on that this week and just run right downhill, right down Colorado's throat because that's the one clear weakness on Colorado's team. You know, they, they, they're they a little inefficient running the ball themselves, but that's but the theme of it all is that Colorado, they are athletic, they are small, and Oregon's offensive line should, should be able to, to run right directly at them. I would not make this a Bo Nix versus Shadur Sanders game. I think that's the scenario where Colorado wins. Oregon, they need to run the ball early and often and get an early lead. They need an early two-score lead in this game by the end of the first quarter. Running the ball, they need to establish that time of possession. You know, there is no reason a team that's running for seven yards a carry right now shouldn't be able to run on Colorado. 1,000%. I, exactly what I had, too, is that Colorado's run defense against Oregon's run game. And also just, you know, right now, without Travis Hunter, I mean, that secondary I still think is really good. But, I mean, you lose your best player in that secondary, Travis Hunter. Bo Nix in that Oregon offense has been able to produce explosive plays, man. Troy Franklin, one of the top receivers uh, probably right now in the, in the NFL draft. So, And also, Oregon, you see right there on the graphic, they have a 94.6 pass blocking grade so far this season, which is the best in 
college football. And I believe they haven't allowed a sack or a hit so far this season, which is absolutely ridiculous. And Colorado hasn't has only had four sacks all season. So Bo Nix should have time back there. And like you mentioned, Bucky Irving right now, the star running back for Oregon, he has been unbelievable so far this year, a- averaging 8.4 yards per carry, seventh in the country for running backs. Bo Nix has a nearly 83% adjusted completion rate over the last two years. That leads all quarterbacks in the country. It's going to be it's going to be difficult for Colorado to, to contain this team, especially without Travis Hunter, who, like we mentioned before, out for the next three weeks with a lacerated liver um, that he suffered from that cheap shot as well. So, yeah, it's going to be difficult for the Colorado's defense to, to slow down Oregon in this game. So, ultimately, Dolan, will Colorado's offense be able to keep up in a shootout, and can Colorado uh, take down Oregon and, and continue the hype train? This was, this was honestly, um, this was the hardest game of the week for me to pick. It was. Um, And it sounds funny because I think of all these games, it was the widest spread by far. Yeah, it is. Um, I I don't I still don't see any reason it should be a 21 point spread. Now, I I get the script where it could get there, where it's basically Oregon just runs wild on him for like 350, 400 yards. Okay, I I think I feel like Coach Prime is going to be prepared for that exact thing. I think what Colorado wants to do is get in the shootout. Mm-hmm. Let's get let's get in a shootout. You you want to you want to trade you want to trade quarterback blows. You want to trade big throws and vertical passing and all that stuff. I think Colorado that's where they want to go. If this becomes a quarterback game, this game's going down to the wire. Yeah, because I I, I think and Bo Nix is a, is really good, but I think Colorado has the quarterback advantage in this game. Yeah, uh, Shador Shador, what he's doing right now is unbelievable. Making every throw on the field. If he sees coverages as well as he has the first three weeks, he can make things happen even without Hunter. He's just, it, it's, it's so cerebral the way he approaches the position. It really is like an NFL quarterback. My, uh, this was so hard for me. Even now, I'm going to regret this. I know I'm going to regret it. I'm going to take Oregon. My, my football sense is telling me to take Oregon. I have him 41 to 38. They're they're better in the trenches on both sides. They have enough weapons uh, um, to make things happen. You mentioned Irving at over eight yards a carry. Oregon being able to do things that are within the foundation of their offense, running straight ahead and Knicks with the play action off of it. I, I wouldn't take too many deep shots if I'm Oregon. I, I'm trying to. I think they. I, if you go tempo, I think you go tempo to continue to run the ball, gas them, gas them out up front. Yeah. But I, I'm not. You know, if if they have any thoughts about making some statement early in the game and 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 showing that Bo Nix is better than Shadur or anything like that, they're playing the wrong game. You do not want to get into into the aerial shootout with Colorado. I don't care if Hunter's in there or not. It was Sanders. He'll find a way to win that game. Um, but I, I, I think, I honestly think if they had Travis Hunter, I probably would pick him to win. Um, but, you know, I believe this game was going to be closer than the spread before when it was 14, 14 and a half. I believe it's definitely going to be within 21. I just don't understand that. I, 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 I know what they're looking at with that disparity we're talking about in Oregon's running game and Colorado's D line. Colorado's D line is, if that's an uphill battle, that's as uphill battle as it gets right now. Oregon's yeah. O line is huge. But I'm going to take Oregon because my, my, my football sense tells me to, and I know I'm going to hate it when Shador does something crazy. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hate the fact that I went with it. I know, even Mr. Shador Sanders so far this season, Dalton. So, yeah, I'm, yeah, I got Oregon too, And, and he, he very well could play a fantastic game, and, yeah. and, and they still lose it. You know, this, the big thing for Oregon, I, they need to take a lead, a big lead into halftime. If, that game, if that's a one-score game at halftime, I think they're in trouble. I think yeah. Oregon's in trouble. I agree. I got Oregon winning this one 40 to 30. So I think that the I agree with you. The three touchdown spread is is one of the wildest spreads I think I've seen. So again, if you're a betting man, bet Colorado plus 21 because I think that is an insane spread. Um, but I, I think it was a little too much of an overreaction to that Colorado State game. I, we mentioned this in the Monday episode. I think that was more about emotions running high and why that game was so close than anything else. Um, this game, I, I think, will be a little bit closer. I think Oregon's going to win 40-30. to 30. Uh, It's going to be a shootout, and like you said, I am worried about uh, that defense for Colorado holding up against Oregon's run game because I think that is a major, major mismatch, and I, it could be it could be tough for Colorado to keep up with that. And also, they don't have the depth, man. They have really good stars in Colorado's defense and Colorado's team in general. Dion's even mentioned it. He's like, we don't have the depth right now. 
that's a problem when Oregon's running down your throat. You got to make substitutions. You're not going to have good players coming in for those other yeah. you know key players. So that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be interesting. So we both have Oregon in this game.